Okay. Here we go. This is another uh, kind of a spooky one. Okay. It's called Sathura. A space adventure. Written and illustrated by Chris Van Halsberg. Hoot and Mifflin Company. And this was back in Boston, 2000. And two. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> Into the ceiling. Mom! Danny Budwing yelled, Mom! Walter and Danny's mother stopped at her son's bedroom door. Walter, she said, get off your brother. Honestly, if you don't stop pulling on his nose like that, it'll end up looking like a like an elephant's trunk. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, said Walter. Then then he'll need ears uh, to match. And he let go of Danny's nose, and he grabbed his ears. E e enough, Mrs. Budwing shouted. Well, Danny started it. Look what he did, Walter yelled, picking up his walkie-talkie. The antenna was dangling by a... See? See? He breaks everything. Well, that... I'm sure he didn't mean to. Mrs. Budwing said. It was an accident, Danny mumbled. Well, from downstairs, Mr. Budwing called to his wife. We're going to be late. Mrs. Budwing gave her sons a kiss goodbye. Now, I set some dinner out in the kitchen. Now, Dad and I shouldn't be too late. Can't you take him with you? Walter whined. Ugh. Well, after their parents left, Walter sat down in front of the television. Can, can, can me and, and you go out and play catch together? Danny asked. It's you and I, said Walter. It's not me and you. And the answer is no. But Danny really wanted to play. He, he threw Walter his hat, but Walter just ignored him. And then he tossed him a baseball, and he beamed him on the head. Walter jumped. All right, you you little fungus. Now, now you're really going to get it. And Danny bolted out of the room, down the hall, and out the front door, with Walter close behind. And they ran into the park across the street, but Danny couldn't outrun his brother. And Walter <coughs> tackled him. I, I'm telling, Danny squealed as Walter got a grip on his nose and pulled. And then he let it go. <laughs> hey, 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 what's that? He said. Well, right next to the boys was a long, thin, box resting against a tree. So Walter got off his brother and he picked it up. Oh, it's just some dumb old game. Here, here, he said, poking Danny in the stomach with the box. It's for babies like you. And then he trotted off as Danny read the words on the box. Jumanji. A... Jungle Adventure. Danny stuck the game under his arm and he ran home after his brother. Well, back inside, Danny looked at the box. It was covered with pictures of jungle animals and he took out the dice and some tokens and a very plain game board. Walter was right, it was babyish game and probably boring too. Danny started to put it away, but he discovered jammed tightly into the bottom of the box another board. And he banged the box on the floor and, and out it popped. Now this board was more interesting. It showed flying saucers, rockets, and planets in outer space with a path of colored squares leading from Earth to a
purple planet called Zathara, and then back to Earth. Well, Danny put a token on the board, and then he rolled the dice. And after he'd moved along the path, something surprising happened. Bzzz, a buzzing sound came from the board, and then with a click, a small green card popped out of the edge right in front of him. He picked it up and he read, Me, uh, <coughs> me, tea or sh showers t take evasive action. Hey, hey, Walter, Danny started to say, What? Well, what does evade when he was all of a sudden he was interrupted by a noisy rat -ta 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 sound coming from the roof? Walter looked up from the television. Holy smoke, he said. It must be a, a hail storm. It's not hail, shouted Danny, holding up the card. It, it's meteors. The noise grew louder, like a thousand golf balls popping off the roof. Ba -da 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 -da. And the room got so dark, Walter turned on the lights and then kaboom! A rock the size of a refrigerator fell through the ceiling and crushed the television. See? Danny said. I, I told you, meteors. Walter stared at the hole in the, in the ceiling. Huh. Okay, he agreed. Meteors. But how did it get so dark so fast? Through the hole, he could see what was left of his parents' bedroom. And beyond that, a black star-filled sky. It, 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 it looks like night up here, up there. It's not night, said Danny. It's outer space. What are you, what are you talking about? Jeez, well, outer space? Walter muttered as he went to the front door. Wait, no, we just, we just lost track of time. It's, it's, it's night, that's all. And he threw open the door and he almost took a step outside before he realized there was no outside there anymore. At least not the one he expected. See, said Danny, outer space. And he led Walter back to the living room and showed him the Zathura game board and the card. Walter sat with his head in his hands, gazing at the path of colored squares that wound around the board and ended back at Earth. Looks like, <coughs> it looks like, Danny said, we, 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 we keep on playing. And or, or, or we're up here forever. Oh, great, said Walter. Up here with you forever? He took a deep breath. <sighs> he put a token on the earth. And then he rolled the dice. And he moved along the path. And the board, it started bzzz, buzzing. And then... And he tossed the card on the board. Danny leaned forward and he read, The <coughs> po polarity on, on, on your gravity belt is reversed. Hmm. I wonder what that means. And he looked up, but Walter was gone. Walter! 
Walter, he called out. Uh, I'm uh, up here, answered Walter. And Danny looked up and he saw his brother pressed against the ceiling. Ah, uh, ah, uh, I've lost my gravity. That's not all you're going to lose, Danny said nervously, because he could see that Walter was being pulled slowly toward the hole in the ceiling and a lonely trip into outer space. Walter realized it too and he, he started clawing at the ceiling, but he, but he couldn't keep himself from moving closer and closer to the hall, to the hole. And, and, and Danny looked around and lying next to the meteor was the cord from the shattered television. And he tossed it to, to Walter, who knotted it tightly to his belt. And then Danny, Danny grabbed the cord, <coughs> the end of the cord, and he tied it, tied his brother off to the sofa. Danny rolled the dice and he moved his token along the path and out popped another card. You, you, your <coughs> gyroscope it, it, it is malfunctioning. And suddenly the house tilted. Everything in the room slid to one side and Danny got buried under a mountain of furniture. Ah, it, ah, and he slowly dug himself out, clutching the game only to find out that Walter was floating back toward the hole in the ceiling. Danny, Danny tied him to the sofa again and he handed up the dice and he, well, Walter rolled and he got his gravity back, dropping to the floor with a thud. Danny moved his piece and handed him his card. Your robot is defective, Walter read. From the hallway came the sound of rattling metal and, and a steady clank, clank, clank. And the boys stared at the doorway as a shiny silver robot stepped into view. And he was having trouble walking on the floor and he headed his head rotated back and forth and he seemed to freeze on walter and the robot's eyes lit up and he spoke in an odd mechanical voice emergency emergency alien life form must destroy and his claw metal hands <laughs> snapped open and shut. Uh-oh, Danny whispered. I think he's talking about you. Fortunately, when the robot stepped forward, he missed the door and banged into the wall and he fell to the floor. He got up and he did it again. And then again, Ah, you better hurry up and roll, said Walter, before he makes it in here. Danny rolled the dice and took his card. You, you passed too close to, to, to Saurus three. G -g Gravity great, greatly increased. The room began to level out. But something strange was happening to Danny. Walter looked at him. Oh, holy smoke, he said. Danny was getting shorter and wider. And soon he was about the size and shape, the shape and size of a large beach ball. Walter, he said in a low voice, I feel very heavy. 
destroy alien life forms, the robot repeated from the hall as he picked himself up again. And this time he made it through the door and he headed for Walter. Dan, Dan he yelled to his brother, Push me. Walter said, what, what, what? Push me. Danny yelled again. Just push me. Walter bent down and he gave his brother a shove. Danny rolled the dice across. Uh, rolled. Danny rolled across the room and like a giant bowling ball he knocked the robot over and flattened his legs did i get him asked danny who couldn't see because he had rolled up against the wall and he was upside down walter pushed him back to the game board you you sure did he said patting his brother's head you you were terrific walter picked up the dice and rolled again. He took his card and his hand trembled as he read Zorgon pirate ship launches photon attack? All of a sudden through the window the boys saw a spaceship and then two points of light shot from the ship and headed directly for the budwing house the first one hit the chimney and sent the bricks falling into the fireplace and then the second hit the upstairs bedroom and walter water began dripping down from the hole in the ceiling Walter handed the dice to, to Danny, who had a hard time lifting his, his short, eh, oh, heavy arm. He rolled, and as Walter moved his token for him, he slowly returned to his normal shape. A card popped out. Danny read it silently. Oh, this, this is bad, he said. Zorgon Pirate boards your vessel. The room shook <laughs> as the spaceship banged up against the house and the boys, they heard footsteps on the roof and through the opening in the ceiling they saw someone or something climb through the hole in the roof and enter the room from above them. And Danny and Walter, they moved to the, to the hallway, standing behind the, the flattened robot, and they held each other. They were too terrified to move. And a humming sound came from their feet. And they looked down, and they saw the robot's eyes light up and he lifted his head fixed his eyes on the hole in the ceiling and he spoke alien life form must destroy and his claw like hands twitched but he couldn't get up Danny and Walter helped him to his feet. He staggered forward as, as the pirate's scaly tail and lizard-like legs swung from the hole in the ceiling. The robot lifted one of his claws and he went <laughs> snapped it around the creature's tail. And the Zorgon howled. <laughs> through the hole, with the robot still attached, and he crashed, and he wailed, banging, banging against the walls overhead, and, and then, minus an arm, the robot dropped through the hole, 
and the boys heard the Zorgon <laughs> scramble across the roof, and then they saw a flash of his rockets as his ship sped. Oh, it seemed hopeless. The robot's eyes were dark again. They'd been playing almost three hours and their tokens rested a galaxy away from Zathura and twice that far from Earth. Oh, we're, we're, we're never going to make it, said Walter. Sh 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 sure we are, Danny answered. And he, he handed the dice to his brother. Me, me and you, uh, together, we, we can do it. Walter cradled the dice in his hand and he sighed. It's, it's you and I, he said wearily. He, you and I. And he looked at his little brother who was grinning. That's right, said Danny. Together. Well, Walter rolled the dice. A one <coughs> and a two. And he moved his token to the only black square on the bowl. And the card popped out. You have entered a black hole, Walter read. Go back in time one hour for each mark on the dice. And he jumped up and he looked around the room and do you, do you see any black holes? And his brother pointed to the floor. A black spot was slowly spreading under Walter's feet like a perfectly round puddle of ink. Now at first Walter thought he was, he was sinking into it, but it was the hole that was rising. And he tried to run, but he, he could not feel his feet. And then, and then as, the, as the hole rose higher, he couldn't, <coughs> he couldn't feel his legs either. Well, hey, what, what's, what's going on, he cried. And Danny looked below the disc-like hole. Well, Walter, he said, the bottom part of you is, is, is gone. And as the hole rose higher, and higher. There was less and less of Walter until only his head remained. And Danny, Danny tried to, to pull uh, on the hole to save what was left of his brother, but his hands passed through the blackness as if it were made of smoke. And his chin dropped to his chest. <laughs> and he began to sob. Danny, Walter said softly, and, and Danny looked up at his brother's floating head. D -d -d Danny, he began. I, I never told you this, but, but I... And that was all he got to say. Because the hole kept rising past his mouth, his nose... And finally, right over the top of his head. Walter was completely swallowed up, floating in empty darkness. And he closed his eyes as he began to spin and plunging head over heels through pitch black space. And then, then, thud. He landed hard on his knees, and there was something in his arms. Something was wriggling around, and he opened his eyes. And he found himself back in the park by his house. And he had one arm wrapped tightly around Danny's neck and, and a hand gripping the boy's nose. Ah, I'm telling, Danny squealed. Walter, oh, he let go. And he fell back on the grass. Oh, oh, wait. He felt dizzy, very dizzy. 
And Danny jumped up and he started to run, but then he stopped and he said, Hey, hey, he said, what's that? And he went to a tree and he picked up a box resting against the trunk and he held the box out to Walter. Hey, look, he said, it's some kind of game. Walter grabbed it. Hey, <coughs> hey, give it back, said Danny. And his big brother got to his feet. Oh, you, you don't want to, to play this, he said. Trust me, I, I tried it once. And he went over to a trash can and he jammed the box deep inside. Come on, he said. I've got a better idea. Let's go play catch. Danny smiled. He, you mean together? Me, me and you? Walter put his arm around his brother. Yeah, that's right, he said. Me and you together. Sathura, a space adventure written and illustrated by Chris Van Alsberg. The end. See you next time.